special live coverage this evening for what promises to be a superb night of football here at Pride Palace and Stadium under the lights. If you're joining us on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube, we've got to give you a huge thank you from wherever you are around the world. Good morning to you. I'm delighted to say that I'm Matt Hill, part of Dingwall Palace and Stadium Manager and I'm still taking the long term. I'm not sure we'd agree with the term frustration, but I'll probably have some more to share at my media colleagues. Neil, it promises to be a superb evening for Alan Connell's young side here at Vitality Stadium. Matt, these nights are always very, very special here at Vitality Stadium. Under the lights, FA Youth Cup, third round, fourth round, fifth round, whatever it is. It's a huge evening for these players and their families and their friends. And they're all in the stadium here tonight watching them. It's going to be a memorable night for them, hopefully. We, we know that there is the lure of a home draw in the fourth, in the fifth round as well against either Leicester or Crew who are playing on Friday. So it's really, really all to play for. And you have to say, although there's a category difference between the two clubs, I don't think there's a great deal between them actually in terms of on the pitch. The last time these two teams met, it was a three-all draw back in October. So hopefully we'll be bringing you plenty of goals live across all platforms this evening. We'll bring you some team news for the Cherries. So we'll start off in goal with Oli Kamis. It's a flat back four of Archie Harris, Lewis Brown, Owen Bevan, the captain, and Finn Tonks at right back. A midfield three of Ferdinand Oko, Marcus Dawes, and Ben Winterburn. And a front three of Noah Bouton, Dana Duajay, and Michael Da Costa Gonzalez. Neil, team news is in. If you could pick one player who perhaps could stand out this evening, give us your thoughts on who that may be. Well, I was very fortunate to attend the third round game at Exeter last month. It was a 2-0 win for the Cherries that night. Michael De Costa Gordon, Michael De Costa Gonzalez, apologies. It was the first time I'd seen him and he looked very, very lively. He's still only 16 as well. Matt, I am going to have a little bit of a Chris Temple moan at this stage about those Queen's Park Rangers numbers because we have not got a hope of making them out. I think we've given Chris Temple enough stick this season for that. So fair play, Chris. We'll, uh, we'll feel your pain here this evening. Just some QPR team news as well. It's Salomon in goal, a back four of Bagan, Harrock, Hawkins and Anthony. Doogie, Cotter, Hamid and Bala in midfield with Murphy and Issa playing in attacking roles for Rangers this evening. It should be a really interesting game here. Like we've said before, it was three all the last time these two teams met in a friendly back in October. And Neil... This is a really special night here at Vitality Stadium. Yeah, let's put let's put a little bit of context on the on the two teams. Like I said, we're category three. We play in the EFL Youth Alliance. Queens Park Rangers play in the second division of the Premier League under 18 division. So it is a much better league. They have only had two wins and they beat Oldham in the last round as well. So you you'd suggest on paper that they're slightly ahead of us in terms of some things, but let, let's see, shall we? Just as we get started here, we'd just like to give a huge thank you to our sponsors, Hearn and Sons this evening. They're our match day sponsor. They're sponsoring our streaming coverage here. So whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook or Twitter, we'd like to give them a huge thank you for helping us with our streaming project Ooh. this evening. As QPR have had the majority of the ball here in the early exchanges. It's with Ferdinand Ocko. bit loose at the back here but Owen Bevan with a really good pass the skipper to Archie Harris the fullback who is wearing the number 10 shirt as Noah Bouton steams past his man drives into the penalty area it's Bouton cuts inside Adua J goes down referee doesn't give a penalty there didn't look interested at all but that just shows what Noah Bouton is all about Neil searing pace not only just Noah Bouton the way that they played the ball out from the back there Lewis Brown looked under a little bit of pressure when he got the ball cool as a cucumber slid it to Owen Bevan Owen Bevan's down the line to Archie Harris and like you said Noah Bouton fantastic run just unfortunate that Daniel Ajeo could not get it out of his feet I'm really enjoying the fact that two uncultured men such as us are having to pronounce the name Noah Bouton Noah Bouton the first French player to play for the academy as well Matt I believe signed in 2020 and yes he is the first ever Frenchman to represent our academy as Da Costa Gonzalez to Tonks low ball in Adua J with less than two minutes into this FA Youth Cup game and you can see how much that goal means to him it's a predators finish at the near post and AFC Bournemouth have taken a super super have taken a really early lead here it's a sensational move Finn Tonks on the right hand side Neil 
and it was a really good finish from Adu Ajay. 1 0 here. I've got that down at 1 minute and 40 seconds, Matt. It was like you said, after that enterprising break down the left hand side from Noah Bhutan, it was a similarly fantastic run down the right hand side, a low zipping cross, horrible to defend in these conditions. And like you say, Daniel Ajayu was there at the near post. It's his 11th goal of the season in competitive games. Just trickled over the line, but what a great start. The perfect start for Alan Connell's side here. It was that perfect, Neil. I couldn't even get my words out on commentary. A brilliant start, exactly what the doctor ordered. And it's 1-0 here to the Cherries early on. It's the difficulty between flitting between French and English, Matt. <laughs> brilliant. Good banter from you, Neil, as Da Costa Gonzalez has a ball on the right-hand side. He'll be a real threat this evening. Scored twice against Exeter in the last round, as Neil mentioned there. And one of his goals was nominated for the Strategic Solutions Goal of the Month Award, which is some really good going here. It's Bevan now. His pass is just intercepted. It's now Harris. And just to bring you into what's going on here in the press box, I'm absolutely delighted to say we've not got one club legend here now. We've got two club legends. Neil Perrett and myself are honoured to be joined by Tommy Elphick here. Tommy, thanks for joining us on commentary. But before we join you, Tommy, Mr Costa Gonzalez cuts inside. Can he get a shot away? He can! Just over. He pounds the floor in anguish. He thinks he should have done better. But a really good flow move there, and he shows what a real threat he is, Tommy. This is your first bit of commentary for us, and you've just seen that shot just go over. Yeah, exciting. So, sorry I'm late. I've, I've missed a goal. No, we won nil up. One nil, yeah, Tommy. Yeah, one nil. Uh, Al Connor was saying he was playing on a fast start, so uh, sorry I missed it. But, yeah, no, great bit of um, skill by Michael. That's him in a nutshell, really. Um, very dynamic, quick. Certainly one to look forward to for the future. It's a goal kick here for QPR. Cherries will be looking for a fifth round tie against Leicester or Crew here at Vitality Stadium. Should the scoreline stay the same? The best ever run in the competition was actually in 2019 when they reached the quarterfinals. Fortunately beaten by a very, very strong Manchester City side here at Vitality Stadium. And Neil, we also reached the FA Cup quarterfinal in 1959. You were how old back then? I thought you might bring me in to discuss that one, Matt. Yeah, I wasn't actually born just quite then, but I think they went out to the eventual winners that year in Sunderland uh, a long time ago. And like you said, to take another 50 years to get into the quarterfinals just shows you what a fantastic achievement it is, Matt. Neil actually played in that game. He was an apprentice at the time. And the Cherries have kept the ball very nicely here and have had much the better of the opening exchanges. QPR will look to wrestle control back of the ball. Now Bagan to Doogie. As QPR look to get a move started from the back. And Tommy, we'll just bring you in here. Obviously, these players will be on your radar in your role in the under-23s. Yep. What are you looking for tonight from our under-18s lads here? Uh, obviously, it's for, for a lot of them, apart from Ben Winterburn, I think you obviously played in the last Premier League Cup game. It's, this would be uh, their first exposure to playing at the stadium in in front of what looks a quite healthy crowd for, for a FA Youth Cup game. So just to see if they can deal with that, really. I think, talking from experience, usually start cramping up in about 70, 80 minutes in these sort of ties. So it'll be interesting to see who it gets the better of and, and who it doesn't. But they've certainly made a, a bright start. And as I said, with the likes of Michael De Costa and, and, and Daniel um, and, and Ben Winterburn, Owen Bevan, another one, they've been up with us quite a lot this year. So just... Uh, steady performance and, and not let the occasion get the better of them really and it has to be cleared there by Brown in a hurry Cherries won't deviate from their philosophy here tonight they will look to play out from the back at every occasion Bagan now for the visitors Doogie just to drop a shoulder past the Costa Gonzalez but good defending from Finn Tonks there it's the better of Doogie and wins a free kick. Done really well there. His player I've actually liked. I've not seen a lot of him, but I watched Al Connell's team train a, a, a few times. He's, he's a very technically clean player and good to see him 1v1 in, in that sort of situation there as well. He, he dealt with that really well. And like you say there, Tommy, it is a healthy crowd. Neil, how much of an impact does that have on the players, do you feel? Well, home advantage is crucial. It doesn't really matter how many people are here. I mean, like I said earlier, it's all family, friends, girlfriends, 
etc and stuff like that so these guys will be here to put on a show but you can say the same that Queen's Park Rangers have probably brought a few people down as well it's a big night for their team as, as well they're obviously doing a live stream as well they've got an ex-player there Paul Furlong doing it for them so you know it's, it's, a, it's a big night for, for everybody all round you might be able to tell me this now what Paul Furlong scored against us in 2008-9 am I right for Barnet? Well, I, I only remember him doing a really poor tackle on Jason Tindall earlier on, in very early in his career, and I know that it probably cost Jason his career because he had numerous operations and never really came back from it. So that's really why I remember the name, not for that goal. Just moving on, that's well won by Ben Winterburn to Brown. The number five, Lewis Brown, is usually a centre midfield player, actually. He's playing at centre-half this evening. As Bouton, who's been very lively in the early exchanges, forces a throw in here on the near side. I just asked Tommy what that's going to be like for Lewis Brown. I mean, you can see he's not the tallest, Tommy. Centre half, Owen Bevan, he's got a big lad next to him. What's it like for a midfielder slotting in there? Yeah, it definitely changes because when you're playing in the middle of the park, you've always got that added line behind you of, of security. So sometimes you can see that. Oh, and it's given away, and Winterbone will get a shot away here. It's just over the bar, but really good intensity from the Cherries there to try and get the ball back in the final third. And Tommy, just back to your original point, we've got Lewis Brown playing as a centre-back. And we've also got Owen Bevan, who used to be a central midfield player, playing as a centre-back now. That's sort of his settled role. Yep. Did you ever get moved about as a kid? Were you, did you fancy yourself as a bit of a front man back in the day? No, I was never quick enough. So uh, No, I, I didn't really... Um, I was, I was always sort of a centre half. I was from a family of centre half, so it was it was always sort of meant to be for me. But just back to Lou Brown there. Yeah, sometimes when when a, a midfielder drops back, they can sometimes jump out into. Oh, and it's given away here, and just cleared away by the goalkeeper there. And Neil, the Cherries are showing some real intent here, looking to really press QPR high. Well, they've been fantastic so far. First five seven minutes, QPR haven't had a haven't had a chance as yet. I know it's very early. But that's about two or three really good shooting chances. If we had our shooting boots on, maybe we would have tested the keeper with a with a couple of those shots. But you know, one nil up. Let's you know, let's try and build on that. If you're just joining us here, whether you're watching on Twitter, YouTube, or Facebook, we really appreciate your support wherever you are around the world. And if you're joining us late, you'll have missed a very early goal from Dan Aduaje that's given the Cherries the lead here. And Bouton has got plenty of grass to drive into on the left hand side. He's got Harris overlapping him if he spots him. He does. Harris will get there. Low cross blocked away for a corner. And the Cherries look very lively, Tommy, particularly yeah. down this left-hand side. Yeah, Al will be very, very happy because we've been sharing an office with, with Al for the past sort of 10 days and, and he's been talking through his game plan quite a bit and it's all sort of going swimmingly well at the moment, inviting QPR's press on. And as we saw there with, with Noah's pace and, and power down the left, exposing that on, on the counter-attack, it, it worked a treat there just for the for the ball for Noah could have just been a little bit further in front of Archie to, to open that cross up for him but it was, a, it was a good move up to then and Arch Harris the fullback is wearing the number 10 your eyes don't deceive you as the corner is played short and just not enough juice on the pass there but Oko will mop things up Doors good skill and a crossing opportunity here in towards Adoujay and it's claimed by Solomon again there Tommy, just a word on that set piece. Sometimes it's very frustrating for supporters when maybe a short corner or free kick doesn't go to plan, but it's all part of the game plan. I spend sort of hours looking at opposition setups and, and ways to expose them as QPR would have looked at, at what we do with, with set plays as well. So it's sort of a bit of a chess match there that they come out on, on top with that one, but might lead to something else further in the game. And QPR looks to play the ball out of midfield. Doogie. His pass is just overcooked and Bevan will mop that up the skipper. Tonks. All the way back to Oli Camis. And this is exactly what Alan Connell's teams are all about. Taking risks, playing out from the back. They're not shy of having the ball, the defence. So Oko wins his header well. And Winterburn just couldn't quite slip it into Da Costa Gonzalez. It's a real show of character, that, particularly at such a young age, Neil. The likes of Owen Bevan. He's not scared of taking the ball so deep close to his own goal. 
Well, that's been hugely impressive so far, the way that they've played out from the back. Like I said, they've mounted a couple of attacks from, from the, in their own 18-yard 18, 18 box. Here and there we go you go, again. Neil. Owen Bevan absolutely spraying a delicious pass out wide to Bouton. And Harris just can't get the timing right on that ball. As QPR will look to come again with Murphy. Murphy finds Doogie. Back with Cotter. Let's go a bit more direct here, QPR, but Tonks is alert and does well. Brown now can drive forward. Adu Ajay. Very good set there by Adu Ajay. Winterburn. To Costa Gonzalez. To Tonks. And Oko with a brilliant crossfield pass. They look full of confidence tonight, the Cherries. It's Bouton. Bouton just couldn't quite get the better of his man there, but he does find Harris, the fullback. Who sprays another great pass wide to Da Costa Gonzalez, who, of course, was the hero in their last round against Exeter City with two goals. Now Tonks. Oko. Tommy, just a word on this move. Cherries do have to be patient at times, don't they? They don't have to rush things. They can keep it calm and composed and keep the ball when they need to. Exactly, especially when you're 1-0 up. But just back to that last move where Ferdy sprayed one out wide, the, the pace at which they moved to break through the lines there and, and, and switch the gears up almost was, was impressive. Um, that's something we don't get to see too much with the pitches that we can train on sometimes at Camford. It's a foul given against Adua J there. Sorry to interrupt you, Tommy. It looked yeah. as though... Looks so like more of it shoulder to shoulder if the, if that old phrase still exists now yeah. in the modern game. Yeah, no, just back to that. The, the, the pitches sometimes get a bit boggy at Camford and you don't see that quality come through until you get on this sort of surface. So again, it's a, it's a real pleasing aspect. Ball is out for QPR throwing. I just asked you, Tommy, about Ferdy Oko. We've seen Jefferson Lermas here among the crowd tonight with his with his children. Is, is it fair to say that Ferdy is this sort of Jefferson Lerma of the under 18s? Yeah, I mean it's a, it's a great role model for for Ferdy to to have in front of him and 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 to see on on you know he's had actually quite a bit of exposure to the first team training sessions this year as well. So he's he's, he's highly regarded and, and thought of, and he's not been as we've seen there, not been afraid to put himself about in in first team sessions as he is tonight. So. But Jefferson's a, a a great role model for him. Um, it's, it's, it's a huge aim to get to that level, but why not? QPR will look to try and find a way back into the game with this move here. Ball goes wide to Bagan. Murphy. It's a clever ball. Now Bagan. QPR fullbacks won't be afraid to bomb on and get forward this evening, but good covering by Ben Winterburn there, the number eight. Ben Winterburn, he actually used to be a left winger back when he was an under-13 player. He's been converted into a central midfield player. And some of you who are here for the under-21s game against West Bromwich Albion, you see there's a lot of potential in Winterburn. And Tommy, what did you make of his performance yeah, that night? Yeah, hu hugely impressed. Um, He'd only trained with us for for a day or two before, and he, he took every bit of information on board in what was a difficult tie as well. You know, the West Brom come down; they was top of the division or the the table that we was in at the time, and he was so so impressive on the night. And I think the thing that stood out above everything, before you talk about ability or or, or, or what he could do with with his technique and stuff, is is the at, the attitude and the application and, and the mindset that that the lads got. So that will stand him in great stead going forward. From a Sporting family is Ben Winterburn. His cousin actually plays basketball for England. So there you go. He's got he's got good genes. As Bouton finds Winterburn, and again they're not afraid to recycle and start again. Let's go back to Ollie Camis, who distributes well to Tonks, and Brown is happy to just clear his lines there. Does QPR have a chance to make the most of that? But Tonks defends well. We'll throw in to the visitors. Neil, what have you made of Alan Connell's team start tonight? We've been on the front foot. We've got the early goal. Surely that's the perfect start. I think it's been a very impressive start so far. We're coming up for 17 minutes in. They're the one that has that's, that have created all the chances. They've obviously got the goal. It was quite similar to the game at Exeter away. Exeter didn't really get too many chances that evening. It was a very professional performance down there at St James's Park. 
and hopefully tonight can be the same. It certainly started off in the right vein. It's with Harrick. QPR are starting to get a foothold in the game, starting to play some clever passes as the ball goes wide. Yet again, it's a great first touch there from Bagan. Crossed into the area. Just overcooked slightly and Bouton will see that out for a throw in. And if you're just joining us on Facebook, YouTube or Twitter, we'd just like to give a huge thank you to our match day sponsors, Hearn and Sons. They're the reason why we're able to provide the free stream this evening. So we'd like to thank them for their really valued and continued support of AFC Bournemouth as QPR get the ball up the pitch. Bevan with a big header. And Winterburn does well to win a free kick there. You can see Alan Connell on the touchline. He's still driving his players for more. He wants more despite being 1-0 up early doors. He won't be content with a 1-0 lead here at Vitality Stadium. Just seeing Marcus Dawes and Noah Bhutan exchanging some words there over a, a, a pass. They actually live together. I think they're probably arguing about who's going to do the washing up tonight when they get home, maybe. As Dawes has the ball here and finds his housemate Bhutan. Looks to whip it high towards Adu Ajay. Just couldn't quite get his feet right there. The striker who scored the opener. As QPR looked to break. Anthony. Towards Murphy. It's a little bit of a loose pass there. Just managed to keep it in. We talk about this competition and... Lots of people say that there's no magic in the FA Cup anymore, but there really is a magic in the FA Youth Cup. We've seen lots of players progress at this club throughout the competition. And of the 10 academy players that were in the squad at Yeovil on Saturday in the FA Cup proper, eight of them have played in this competition for Bournemouth. Just goes to show some of the good work, Tommy, that's going on in the academy setup at the moment. Yeah, and as you say, this competition's massive. I remember coming through the system at Brighton and you'd always look for this game and... and, and you know, try and get to that round three at the time. We was a category sort of, we, we wasn't even an academy, it was a school of excellence. So we would start off in the preliminary rounds and I was fortunate fortunate enough to get through to the, the quarterfinals, got knocked out to a very good Newcastle side who had the likes of Andy Carroll and, and Tim Crew in, in the team. So uh, we went on a great run and, and these are memories that you can make that can stick with you regardless of with what you go on to do after your apprenticeship. So even if you don't go on to make it, they're always highlights of, of, of careers, you know. It did look like a good tackle by Ferdinand Oco there, and he's thrown the ball away. Probably got to be careful with throwing the ball away. Yeah, see, that's, right in that's, front of the referee. That's the stuff that when the occasion starts getting to them a little bit. So, Ferdinand need to rein that in a little bit and, and manage himself. Fair to say that that's a booking all day long, and in any other game, he's thrown the ball away petulantly, and he's very, very fortunate there. Just goes to show that we're not biased here on AFCB TV. As Murphy now, shooting opportunity for Murphy. It's very, very well blocked by the skipper Owen Bevan. And can AFC Bournemouth counter-attack here? As Costa Gonzalez is brought down, but it's a throw in to the visitors. It's a big block by the captain Owen Bevan there, the number six. You'll probably recognise him from some of the coverage of the club's pre-season tour this summer. And there he is again with a big clearance it's very highly thought of Owen Bevan he's a Wales under 19 international and he is Alan Connell's captain this evening Tommy you'll have seen Owen's progression with the under yep. 23s and the development squad just tell us a little bit about what Owen is about from a centre half to another fellow centre half yeah you see he, 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 he's good on the ball <laughs> um, but no he's, he's very, um, very brave very committed uh, leads this group well um, he, he's spent a bit of time up with us this year. He's had to manage a, a couple of little issues. Um, but yeah, he's got a, a lot of um, instincts that, that will hopefully get him a, a good career in the game. That pass was just off there by Acer. But Bagan will keep it alive. Tonks is alert again. Removes the danger. Finn Tonks has done quite well, Neil, out there on that right hand side. And he's one on one duels. Yeah, he's done very, very well. Look, very, very solid. He looks quite tricky, the left winger over there. So we're going to have to keep some tabs on him. 
Uh, had a couple of couple of crosses already come in, but they were a little bit too deep. But like you said, Finn's done very well, but they, the back four have done very well, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And they're the two lads that, that Al Connell actually highlighted for QPR, the two wingers. So uh, a, a, a tough task for the two fullbacks tonight, but they're both doing well up to now. Really good counter-attack opportunity here with Bouton. He's got Harris running beyond him, and Harris will do that all evening. Infield to Dawes. The momentum of the move is kept alive with a brilliant pass to Bouton, who the flag is up on the far side. It's a clever ball around the corner there from Dawes, but Bouton just couldn't stay on side. 22 minutes played here on our live coverage. That early Dan Aduajay goal is enough for a 1 0 lead here for the home side. It's Brown nods it down to Harris. It's up in the air and Oko will gobble that up all day. The ball is back in QPR's possession. Good move by Acer. And Winterburn just brought him down there as he was hounding in on goal. It's probably a good foul, actually, Tommy, would you say? Yeah, we'll see how this result in free kick ends up. But they've actually got a, a good foothold in the game in the last five, ten minutes, QPI, and starting to see how dangerous they can be. So for our lads now, I've got to manage this next period, try and get get back in, in, in control of, of, of possession. Um, we were talking about the two wingers of QPR. Their strengths, actually, their weakness also, because they leave free up every time we attack. So... I think if we can break that first press and, and, and sustain a bit of pressure in their half, it, it wouldn't hurt at the moment. It'd be Murphy. He goes for goal. It's very, very well blocked by the wall. Whip back in and well headed away by Brown. The Cherries will force QPR to start again. Bagan. Good ball round the corner for Issa towards the back post and Harris couldn't quite clear his lines, but handball given by the referee there and Archie Harris just couldn't quite clear his lines but the Sherry's are safe here at 1-0 Just a quick shout out for Lewis Brown and his dad Phil Brown who manages locally in the Wessex League with Bournemouth Poppies had great success with Bournemouth Manor as well so it's uh, always great to see a local lad doing well in the local team it's Headed up in the air Well won by Harris Oko does just enough. And Winterburn oh, no, that's not has had a free kick given against him here, which I'm not sure that's a foul. It's probably a bit harsh, isn't it, no, Tommy? I thought he was uh, actually really clever from Ben. He got his body across in between the man and the ball. I thought he just edged him out nicely there, but quite unfortunate. And QPR are much to Tommy Elphick's thoughts, having the better of things as things stand, but they haven't created a clear-cut opening. Alan Connell's cherries standing firm Bagan good ball down the line here but very good defending from Oko again read the game very well and Tonks looks to relieve the pressure sometimes Tommy as Finn Tonks proved there sometimes you do just have to clear your lines to reset and go again rather than try and stick to the philosophy at yeah. all times yeah but back to Ferdy there great great um, positioning and, and, and reading of the game and composure to try and keep the ball uh, so it wasn't a bad decision from Finn actually to, to go long and, and try and pin QPR back a little bit you can see why he, he'd be thinking that at the time so Michael needs to just rein it in now and De Costa Gonzalez just having a nibble at his man there nothing too serious if you're just joining us whether you're on YouTube Twitter or Facebook we're 25 minutes into this FA Youth Cup tie and if you tuned in late, then you would have missed a very, very early goal within two minutes for Dan Adouadjai. It's his 11th goal of the season. It's given AFC Bournemouth the lead here in this cup tie. Oli Kamis will distribute it lovely wide. Pick. It's a lovely ping to Nurbouton from Oli Kamis. Oh, Bouton just runs into trouble a bit there, and it's well won by Anthony, who will clear his lines, but... Owen Bevan, monstrous in the air as ever. QPR, nick it back. Murphy. 
And QPR show their quality there. It's with Bala. Fagan. Again, very good defending there by Da Costa Gonzalez. Neil, it's, he's caught the headlines, Da Costa Gonzalez, for scoring goals. And oh, and just to interrupt my point there, because it's brilliant play by Finn Tonks, and there's a counter attack opportunity here for AFC Bournemouth. Boot on. He's got Harris alongside him as ever. Energetic Archie Harris. Calms things down. It's now Dawes. Oh, Harris with a lovely piece of play. Bouton. Low cross towards Adu Ajayi. He got the wrong side of his man. It's some really good defending, actually, by Harrick at QPR. And we'll have a corner here. 27 minutes gone. What a fantastic flick by Archie Harris there. His, his dad played professionally for a few clubs, also played for Weymouth as well. But that was a fantastic flick to put Noah Bhutan in and a great cross. But like you said, fantastic bit of defending at the, near, at the front post there to uh, prevent uh, another shot on target. Number 11, Marcus Dawes, will take this set play. He's got plenty to aim for in the penalty area. Dawes whips it low. Adu Ajayi. Da Costa Gonzalez. It's a very, very well-worked corner routine, Tommy. It almost caught us out, let alone yeah. the QPR defence, but the Costa Gonzalez just pings one over. Yeah, it takes us back to the first set piece. Sometimes you need the first one to fail to sort of lure QPR into doing something different, and then when they change their setup, it leaves something else open. So you can see how well coached the team are and, and how clued in they are to, to, to various parts of the game, not only in play, but, but when the ball's dead as well. So would have been huge credit to Well Connor if that one dropped in. And those are the fine margins, aren't they, that Alan Connell always talks about. The ball is tossed up towards Winterburn. Da Costa Gonzalez will retrieve the ball, but loses it high up the pitch. And again, good pressure from Winterburn and Da Costa Gonzalez. Didn't let the ball go. There's no such thing as a lost cause in this AFC Bournemouth team, is there? No, you can you can see sort of a, a culture at the club that, that's stuck with it for many years now, and, and that's certainly one of them. Um, you know, above and, um, and above everything else is is the work rate and and the commitment to put the team above yourself. So we certainly see certainly seen it up to now with with this group. It's a QPR throw. Just another thing to add, looking at the team sheet as well, there's actually four sec four second years in the starting lineup, and so that means that there's going to be seven lads in this team that will be playing in this competition next season, so that really is other another encouraging sign. Yes, it is, it's, it is a very young group. Um, we obviously look for the ones that are going to be up with the 23s from, from next season, and, and as you say, no, only four of them lads tonight, so um, it's, 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 a, it's a good feat if, if we can get, get through this round. Free kick here, a chance for Owen Bevan to go forward. It's Marcus Dawes, a number 11. Scored 18 goals last season in a very, very good campaign. The under 18s won the Merit League. He was one of the standout performers, and he'll whip this free kick in. It's high towards Bevan. It's flicked on, he's won it. Goal kick, but again, I think we've talked so much about Owen Bevan tonight, but again, we haven't talked about him in an attacking sense from set plays. He's a real unit up there and he can get up high. Yes, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's such a big jump from the 18s to the to the 23s, if you like, the, the age difference. You don't realise how big it is physically for some of these lads. But when you look at Owen out there tonight, you know, he, he looks like he's almost ready for that very, very soon, if not already. Talk about the step up from the 18s to the 23s. Certain Jaden Anthony has scored for AFC Bournemouth in the FA Youth Cup. He scored a 2018 win over Hull City. It's a foul on Bouton there, and he stayed down. It's a yellow card. It didn't look a very pleasant tackle. It was a little bit clumsy from Doogie. That's the first booking of the evening. Tommy, do you think it's a yellow card? I'm going to be in the defenders' camp here. <laughs> I thought he'd done well to win the free kick. Um, saw his power again, pulling away from someone. But yeah, he's done well. 
Let's say our team have actually managed this last five or six minutes quite well. They've they've got another foothold in the game again. Sort of took the steam out of QPR. A lot of possessions been in in the QPR half. So it's doors whip deliveries whipped in with real venom. And Cherries will come again with this throw in, which Archie Harris will take the number ten. Archie Harris. We talked about Ben Winterburn having a sporting family. Archie Harris, as Neil mentioned, his father's played for South End, Chester, Leighton Orient, but his sister also plays football for Wales. So there's a little tidbit there for you about the flying fullback, Archie Harris. Cherries move it well from left to right. Winterburn does well. Here is Harris. He's got two Twain four in the middle. One of them's Adu Ajay, the goal scorer. Just couldn't quite get it under his spell. Talking of the uh, family links there, Matt's reminded me about Daniel Adua J. His, uh, his uncle Tony is Tony Yaboa, the former Leeds player, but he's not actually his uncle. He's his dad's best friend, but because he knows him so well, he calls him Uncle Tony. Tony Yaboa, scorer of some iconic Premier League goals. That's not a bad fountain of knowledge to have. A breaker of my heart as well. I was a big Liverpool fan at the time when he was banging goals in off the crossbar against him. It's Gonzalez. He looked like he was fouled there. Harris will resume play. Bouton. Doors. Drives forward Doors and is fouled. Free kick here in a very dangerous position and it was won very well by Doors. Yeah, he's Marcus, another one who's been up with us quite a bit. He's a little bit of a hybrid sometimes plays up wide and see him tonight playing as an eight when he plays wide he, he usually plays on the left cutting in on his right he actually reminds me of a certain Mark Pugh so uh, yeah again he's, he's had a terrific season up to now and certainly doing very well tonight no pressure there no. <laughs> he's able to have half the career of Mark Pugh yeah. then he's done very very well club legend Pugh doors whips one low it's hit the wall a little fly out for Cherry's corner. Marcus Dawes has looked very lively. He's been to several Northern Ireland under 18s camps. That just goes to show the sort of pedigree that the Cherry's Academy are now attracting. It's going to be Dawes to take the corner. It's Costa Gonzalez on screen there, jostling for position. And it's headed in towards Winterburn, and it's just blocked by Adu Ajayi. Couldn't quite get it under his spell. It's another very good set-piece routine there from Alan Connell's side, and a free header. As Tonks now will go back to Camis, the Cherries will start again and get their shape. And Camis looks to ping it to Archie Harris, who just loses out. Anthony... It's a good challenge by Harris on Doogie there. And Tommy, just going back to that set play, it was another good set piece routine again. Yeah, and you can see Marcus mix his delivery up there. He, he didn't whip it in, he, he drove it. It looked like it was something that was worked on again. I think it might have been Daniel who actually got in, in the way of his, his, his uh, teammate's header there. So, quite unlucky. 35 minutes in here, 10 minutes to the break. The Cherries took a very early lead through Dan Adu Ajayi. QPR had a sustained spell of pressure, it's fair to say, but Cherries have managed this spell of the game very, very well. And have control of the ball here with Bevan. Adu Ajayi. Winterburn. Da Costa Gonzalez. Just can't quite keep the ball in there, Da Costa Gonzalez. A very interesting one, Da Costa Gonzalez. He was born in Alicante and lived in Spain for the early part of his life. And Neil, I'm sure you've got a great story about why he uses his, why he uses his left foot as opposed to his right. Well, he used to be right-footed, and when he was six, he was in a motorbike accident where his dad was driving, and he had to change which foot he kicked with. It seems to have worked, because he's very, very good on his left. As QPR will look to make something happen here, but it's very well read by Tonks, and a good turn by Winterburn. Doors. Bevan. Harris to Bouton. Just given away there by the Frenchman. And a good chance here for Rangers. It's Bala. 
And Ballard just can't keep it in. But I guess, Tommy, the thing that you're looking for tonight is the reaction there. They may have given the ball yeah. away, but the reaction to win it back and force an error, excellent than things you want to see. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting there. That's obviously, like we said before, QPR, they, they leave free up and, and Finn Tonks was, was involved in the first passage there and, and was out of position when it got switched around. But his effort to, to get back in was, was superb. So as you say, they're, they're the sort of standout attributes and, and, and the fundamentals of the, game, of the game that you really want to see from a young lad coming through. Finn Tonks, he was actually scouted by District Football. Joined the club as an under 30. Just Dawes does very well there. And Oko can drive forward here. Ferdinand Oko, he's got boot on to his left. He said he goes to Winterburn on the right. Just couldn't quite play the killer ball, but the Sherrys will keep it alive. Dawes, still Dawes, and he's fouled there. Referee goes to his pocket again. It's another yellow card. And again, some really good driving play from midfield. That's what Ferdinand Oko is all about, Tommy, like you've said all evening. Yeah, to break it up and, and to drive the team forward like that it was, was excellent. Um, would like to have seen him to make the pass because it would have ended a nice move with, with, with a finish. So he was unlucky not to make that, but good backing up from Marcus to, to take a couple of lads on and, and win a free kick in a dangerous area now as well. Cherries have Archie Harrison, Marcus Dawes over the ball here. Be Harris on his left or Dawes on his right? Or will they try a special one from the Alan Connell set piece book? I think that wall's a little bit too far over. I'd fancy Archie around the. It's Harris. There he goes go. around the Ooh. wall. Just wide. It's a really good effort. And psychic Tommy Elphick did <laughs> predict that. <laughs> It's unlucky, it's a really good effort. It's just wide, shown on the replay there. Salomon just about clears his lines as Oko wins it. Winterburn. Oh, unlucky. It's unlucky. It's with Harrock. Get it out to Sam Bagan, the left back. And again, Cherry's bodies were very quick to get behind the ball there. And Oli Camis very commanding there. Camis, he spent seven years at Chelsea before joining AFC Bournemouth at under-15 level. And Cherry's will come again with Dawes. Really good feet from him. Still Dawes. Oko. Bevan. A really good piece of play there. Brown and Oko combine to give Tonks time to play it to Da Costa Gonzalez. Flicks it on. Adu Ajayi, the goal scorer. Adu Ajayi couldn't quite get his pass right, and QPR can break here. It's three on three as things stand. And Finn Tonks, it's a foul. It's probably a clever one, and he'll have to take a yellow card for the team there. It just goes to show, Neil, that in the blink of an eye, it doesn't matter if you've got the ball, this QPR team do have the talent to counter well. Well, yeah, and when you're only 1-0 up, that, that's, that's, a, that's a danger. I mean, he's taken a booking for the team there, no question about it. Let's see, like Tommy said, whether, he, whether he's done the right thing. Let's see how they get on with this free kick. Just over five minutes until the break. The Cherries could go in at half-time 1-0 up, I'm sure. Alan Connell will be delighted with that. It's free kicks being taken. We'd just like to again take the chance to thank Hearn and Sons, who are our sponsors today. They've bought us the streaming rights for today. So free kick is harmlessly over the bar. And Win Ben Winterburn was actually on the floor under the wall there. It was, it was harmlessly over from Riley Cotter. Again, just goes to show. That the planning and the little margins of Alan Connell's team that had a man on the on the floor yeah, yeah. behind the wall. Clearly scouted QPR your, set pieces really well. I'm not sure you're having what's, that, Tommy. What's your thoughts on this tactic, Neil? I'll be having a word with Alan Connell about this one. Well, I'm not sure I'd get up, actually, if it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Beat yourself up, Neil. Da Costa Gonzalez. It's well won by Bala. 
in, in all seriousness, as an ex-player, Tommy, what do you make of that uh, free kick now? Everyone's doing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure really. I'd, I can't remember the last time I saw someone um, go underneath a wall. But I remember back in the day with Eddie, we used to, if a wall was outside of the box, you would jump. Um, and if the wall was inside the box, you would jump with your toes down so that he couldn't go underneath it. But there was some little details where Eddie was a genius. So... I was always someone that would sometimes be in the wall um, more often than not. So if, if he was inside the box, as I said, it would jump toes down so they couldn't go underneath the wall. Um, but I just, I don't know, sometimes I think in that situation, if a team was switched on to another team doing that, it leaves you short somewhere and you could possibly expose that. So. It's a brilliant pass, Tommy, just to interrupt you there by Da Costa Gonzalez to Bouton. He's one-on-one with his fullback. Just stands him up. Harris, who will overlap and help Bouton all evening, full of energy. Doors, Bouton. Bouton all the way back to, to Brown. Oko, previously of Tottenham Hotspur and West Ham, Ferdi Oko. Harris finds Doors on the left-hand side. Bouton, clever flick. Bouton looks to get his cross into the box and QPR slash it away ball is out of play for a throw in and again Cherries have probably been the better team all over the pitch but like we said num- a number of times on the stream this evening this left hand side looks particularly dangerous Tommy yeah they're, they're ending the half very strongly um, being in front there a little, little bit of lack of experience but sometimes you're better off resting on the ball in the opposition's half you know as we see now you're going to defend a, a, another attack Good chance if you give here the ball up too quick, to break. Sorry. sorry to interrupt you there, Tommy. As well, Winterburn does enough to hold the momentum of that move. It's a goal kick to AFC Bournemouth. Just two minutes to go until half time. It's all about seeing the game out now, isn't it, Tommy? For yeah, Alan he, Connell. Just a word on Ben Winterburn there as well. I'm, I'm not sure what sort of coverage people are seeing at home, but if you had a wide, wide view of this game, the the, the ground that he's covering is is unbelievable. Um, um, like um, amazing traits for a youngster to have to realise the work that has to be put in really as, as a, again as I say sacrificing himself a little bit but great work from him so far Ben Winterburn is a housemate of Archie Harris the fullback a lot of these players do tend to live together Neil don't they particularly with the academy not a lot of lads now actually come from the Bournemouth area so they do have to move into into digs and they do often live together yeah well the, you know the club had to widen its net a few years ago and look how it's paid dividends now with people like Jordan Zamora and you know Gavin Kipkenny from Ireland Jordan Zamora London Jaden Anthony London you know Ben Ben Winterburn is another one you know for the first time he's moved away from home and he's living living in digs with Archie Harris and Harris did play a good pass there to Bouton it's Dawes he's got three ahead of him Dawes finds to Costa Gonzalez, who has a crack. It's a low one. Almost crept into that near post, but Solomon had to be alive there. Just goes to show the quality that the Costa Gonzalez has there. He might have been 25 yards out without a sniff at goal, but he's made the goalkeeper work there. Yeah, coming in on, feet, on his left foot, Neil said earlier, you know, how well he did in, in, in the previous round at Exeter, and it was those flashes of, of quality that won us the game last time, so... He certainly looks a threat again. Be Dawes again with the corner. Cherries have three men standing just outside the penalty area. Dawes whips it high. It's in towards Bevan. Just couldn't quite get his head onto it. And Harris will rescue the situation. Oko. Brown. Really good pass to Archie Harris there. Lewis Brown is screaming at Archie Harris to keep the ball, but he whips it in. Adi Ajay will get there. Ajay. Winterburn onto his left. Gonzalez, Da Costa Gonzalez in the area. Drives one low. Good save. Still alive for the Cherries with Dawes. He fizzes it over. That will probably be the last action of the half. And that could be a very, very crucial interception from Matteo Salomon in the QPR goal. Yeah, no, again, just, just trying to look back there. 
great foot, footwork from Ben Winterburn to keep the, the attack alive and, and Michael on his left foot again who's unlucky for Daniel real striker's instinct there trying to follow up with the rebound um, not for it to fall to him but certainly um, ending the half really really strongly again there's two balls on the pitch sure it'll be half time once Salomon takes his kick So close to 2 0 for the Cherries. Salomon is taking his time here. Not sure what's taking so long here. Salomon plays it short. It's out for a throw in, and the referee does blow for half time here. It's been a really impressive display from Alan Connell's young side here. It only took them just under two minutes to take the lead. Dan Aduajai's 11th goal of what's been a fruitful campaign for him so far. Neil, what are your thoughts on that half? It's been a very good half, but one that they need to continue in the second. Oh, most definitely. I mean, like you said, a second goal, a third goal. You know, we'd be sitting here a lot more confident. It's, on, it's still on a knife edge. It's in the balance. We've got the lead. QPR look very, very dangerous. Just seeing a replay of the goal now. Yeah, he slid in very bravely at the near post there. Daniel Adjurajai, yeah, that's a, a fantastic start. Now we've just got to try and consolidate it and build on it maybe in the second half. Tommy? Yeah, no, managed the game really well. Showed great maturity there. Um, to they stem, stem the flow of the tide on about 25 to 35 minutes. QPR looked dangerous, but managed to get a foothold in the game, get the ball back up in QPR's half and finished it really really strongly with some good chances so I'm sure I'll be really pleased with the first half and come out all guns firing keep the pressure up and, and as Neil said try and extend the lead. This is the second chance here for the Costa Gonzalez Neil it was so close to 2-0 just before the half time whistle but a really really good save there from the QPR stopper. Well he made two two very good saves in quick succession because just before that he made the save low down to his near post I think Michael da Costa Gonzalez is one of those players where you would say creates something out of nothing, and he's just done that twice in the space of five minutes in the end of this first half. There, you know, one of those goes in, and we're looking at a two-nil lead. Like I said, it's a one-nil lead, and now we really got to be on our toes throughout the second half. Some some good chances there, and we'll just wrap up our coverage for 15 minutes or so during the half-time interval. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back in 15 minutes. We'll see you then.
QPR in the FA Youth Cup fourth round. A substitution here for QPR. Adam Doogie has been replaced at the break for QPR. And the Cherries have that one goal lead thanks to a very, very early goal from Dan Adouajay. Neil, what do you think Alan Connell said to his team at half time? Because they did end the half very strongly and could have gone 2 0 up. Well, I, I mean, I've never been a football manager, but I imagine he's just said more of the same, lads, because it's been outstanding. I mean, you know, Q, QPR have had a couple of spells where they've had a little bit of possession, haven't really tested Oli Kamis seriously yet. Back four have looked very, very composed, very comfortable on the ball. So, I mean, Alan, it's probably one of the shortest team talks he's ever given, I would imagine. Just do exactly the same again. And Tommy, what have the Cherries got to do in this second half? I know they've obviously got to keep applying the pressure, but they've got to control the game as well. Particularly, yeah. one nil's a dangerous scoreline, isn't I, it? I think that's that's the words there. Control the game, control the possession. Um, QPR are very, very dangerous on, on the counter-attack with the, the two wide boys. Um, so, so locking them out early and, and much of the same as Neil said, really. And just as we get back underway here, we'd just like to thank our match day sponsors, Hearn and Sons, who have really helped us with our streaming operation this evening. We'd like to thank them for helping us get to you live on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube this evening. And a special thank you, of course, to all of our viewers who are joining us around the world as the Cherries look to build on their 1-0 lead here with Bouton. Look to slip it to Harris, but just couldn't quite find the overlapping fullback, but he's got it now. Harris gets to the byline and wins a corner. Another quick start here from Alan Connell's side. The, the three lads down the left have a real nice connection. Noah, Archie and, and Dorsey on that left side of, of the midfield three. So, like you say, a good start. And hopefully Al's got something up his sleeve for us again here. It'll be Dawes to whip it in. He's had good variety on his set pieces so far this evening. It's towards the near post, but it's well cleared by Anthony. And Tommy, we were talking at half time about the FA Youth Cup and the memories that you had playing against such a strong Chelsea team it really could be a special night in the careers of some of these young players yeah definitely and I go back to my youth team days all, all the time because so much good was installed in me and we had such a, a great group I think nine of us went on to make first team appearances and at that time Brighton was very much based around getting youth team lads through so it was really really important and like we've seen this year for, for our first team the amount that the likes of Travs and, and Jay-Z and, and uh, Jaden Anthony have, have contributed to our first team and Gav Kilkenny as well. And, and when the bench has been filled with them, lads, you know, it, it doesn't feel like they're that far away. And Bouton's crosses in towards Bevan, who just couldn't quite get the ball under his spell in the penalty area. And like you alluded to there, Tommy, it was Christian Sady, Zeno Wibson Rossi, Nathan Mariah Welsh, Brennan Camp, Will Dennis, Jaden Anthony, Gavin Kilkenny and Tarek Giddery who are all in the squad at Yeovil, who are featured for the Cherries in this competition at some point during their academy careers. And Adu Ajayi will look to wrestle control of the ball. It's a good tackle by Winterburn. Oko. Back to Bevan. And Harris now. Goes a bit more direct, Harris, towards Adu Ajayi, who almost nicked in ahead of the centre-half there. Neil, they're just showing that they can mix it up. They're not all about keeping the ball at the back and being patient. They can go long when needed. Yeah, and as well as that, and I thought in the first half how that they, they put their foot in as well. And they, they've got a bit of everything in the team, Matt. Like you said, go long, play it short, put their foot in, keep the ball. They've got a bit of everything. And here's Harris. Just couldn't quite slip that ball through. It was a really good opportunity, actually, for Archie Harris if he got the pass right. Very adventurous fullback is Harris. QPR and out the other end and Finn Tonks with another clever interception but it's a foul there on the QPR man it's a free kick to Queen's Park Rangers the FA Youth Cup was won by Aston Villa last season Neil but Chelsea have dominated it over the past few years they've had eight finals in the past 10 FA Youth Cups that's some going for such a big club. And also, I remember a couple of years ago, you spoke to Dom Solanke about his FA Youth Cup experiences. 
and look at what he's doing now. It really can make a player grow in stature this competition. Well, as Tommy's just said, you know, he, he remembers his youth cup, FA Youth Cup days like they were yesterday, remembers who he's played against, who was playing with him. That's how much it means, means to these players. Just touching on Aston Villa there. They've gone out already, beaten by Leicester, who, you know, Leicester or a crew for the winners of this game. So the, the holders are already out. Just as Neil said there, it would be Leicester or crew here at Vitality Stadium for whoever comes out on top in this contest. Does QPR have a corner here looking to find their way back into the game here at Vitality Stadium? Four minutes into this second half. QPR, very similar setup to the Cherries from this corner. A lot of players hovering outside the penalty area. It's played short. Whipped in towards the back post. It's very well headed away. QPR will keep it alive. It's a really good challenge by Adu Ajay, the goal scorer. QPR keep it alive. It's a low one and Bevan just missed it. Chance on here. Good block by Bevan. And it's just wide. Omar Issa. Sorry, I should say it was actually the defender. The tall defender Hawkins with the effort there. Narrowly wide. And the Cherries will resume play here with Brown. Tonks. Looking to try and be positive and play the ball forward. Tonks. De Costa Gonzalez. De Costa Gonzalez runs into trouble and wins a free kick very well there. Neil, just a word on De Costa Gonzalez. He can actually play for three different countries if he wants to. His mom's from Ecuador, so he can play for them. His dad's from Guinea, so he can play for them. His granddad's from Colombia, so he can play for them. So he's, he's spoilt for choice, really, on the international stage. Should he, should he prove his quality to get there? He could also play for Spain, where he was born. As Archie Harris now looks for Adu Ajayi, but he's just overcooked that pass. And he used to live in Portsmouth, apparently. Glamorous Portsmouth, of course. It's a foul there by... Ben Winterburn and one thing that's really caught the eye about Ben Winterburn isn't just his ability on the ball but he is willing to get stuck in and like you mentioned Neil he's willing to stick his foot in as well been very very impressed with him I didn't see the Premier League game unfortunately against West Brom but been so impressed with him I was impressed with him in the third round away at Exeter but I was impressed with the whole team and one player we haven't mentioned is Oli Kamis the goalkeeper because he hasn't done a great deal to all he hasn't had to do a great deal because he's got a great back four in front of him but he was absolutely faultless away at Exeter bearing in mind he's only just come into the team and he is only a first year as well so Wales under 17 international Oli Kamis once again QPR will try and get their way back into this FA Youth Cup tie Murphy Got plenty of numbers beyond him, Murphy. Cherries have every man behind the ball. Cotter. Looks to thread one over the top, but it's well scouted by Bevan. The Cherries, Tommy, are just having to do a little bit of defending here just to hold what they have. Yeah, good position there from Ferdy. And now these are the moments where it's, it's very important to try and keep the ball and, and try and gain some control again. Um, we can see that QPR are moving the ball a lot quicker and a lot slicker around the 18-yard box. So somehow through possession, we need to keep them away from our goal a little bit more. Tonks back to Lewis Brown, who is usually a centre midfield player. It's a lovely ball up towards the goal scorer, Adu Ajayi. I, I said, didn't I, just after half-time, Alan's probably had his, one of his easiest half-time team talks. Their manager's probably been quite the opposite. He's said to them, you know, you want to go for it at the start of the second half. Come on, we want to start creating some chances. Um, Mika Hyde is their, their manager, the under-18s manager here. So he probably had quite a lot to say at half-time, I would imagine. If you recognise the name, Mika Hyde, he's a former Jamaica international. He won 17 caps for them. He's probably most known for his time at Watford. Made over 250 league appearances for the Hornets. And the ball is driven high towards that left-hand channel, but Camus is there to mop things up. He's done really well. I know Neil said he's, he's not had a lot to do, Ollie, but a couple of times he's had to be on the edge of his box and, and tidy things up. He's done it brilliantly. It's Bevan drives forward, so confident on the ball, Owen Bevan. 
really impressed Scott Parker and his coaching staff on the pre-season tour this summer with the first team. Here is Brown. Tonks. Tonks just can't beat his man. It's a throw in. Just asked Tommy about that. Owen Bevan spends nine weeks training with the first team over pre-season, goes on a pre-season tour. What's that going to do for his confidence, Tommy? Oh, it's, when you have such a big transition like we've had this summer with, with new management team in, in place as well, and it helps that lad and, and this group so much to relay their messages and what it'll do for his confidence and what he'd have learnt in them nine weeks will be absolutely unbelievable for him going forward. And if he's ever used to jump up, which he has been since, you know, he's already primed and, and prepped for what's expected so yes it's a, it's a testament to him at that age to be trusted like that speaking of the first team setup as this shot goes wide Neil spotted Jefferson Lerma earlier but we've also got Leif Davis Chris Meppham Morgan Rogers I'm sure there's a few other first team members of the squad on that far side watching as part of the crowd and Tommy that's really nice to see isn't it the first team actually coming here they don't have to be here but they want to be here to support Alan Connell and his team that's a really nice touch yeah brilliant and and again that's one of the draws of of, of the FA Youth Cup and why it is so special I remember when I was a youngster and the club captain would always turn up to to the games and and the senior pros would always be there and they'd be in the dressing room after congratulating you or, or commiserating you so that's again what what makes these nights special for these young lads and, and they'll appreciate that like no other really it's Bouton it's given away. But Bouton does well to try and wrestle the ball back. The referee penalises the Frenchman. You keep asking Tommy about his FA Youth Cup memories, Matt, but you've not asked me about mine yet. Was that the 1959 quarterfinal, Neil? <laughs> no, I did play in it once. I played for Paul Town and we played Bournemouth. We lost 5-0 and the man I was marking scored a hat-trick. <laughs> So I've done all this research here this evening and I don't know that my co-commentator actually played in the FA Youth Cup. That is, we need to communicate better, Neil, I think. As back, onto the, back onto the action on the pitch as QPR will look to test a Cherry's defence with this set play. It's a high one. Just missed by Bevan. And they can't quite clear their lines, but Bevan does get there and it's a corner to QPR. It was a very, very good delivery, actually, by Murphy there for the visitors. Yeah, it looked like Owen dropped in a little bit early, anticipating where it was going to go, and unfortunately just missed it, but done well to recover and concede a corner. QPR have had a number of set plays to start this second half. They've really come out with a real intent to get that equaliser. The corner is low. Almost a carbon copy of the Cherries' first corner of the game, which... Didn't go to plan. Here is Cotter. He did look offside there and the linesman did raise his flag. And it is offside. And the Cherries have defended that very well again. A good line there, Tommy. Yeah, good line. And just before that as well, Lewis Brown was, was alive on the edge of the box for the short and, and intercepted it well. He's, he's had a seamless game so far, dropping back, like we said before, in, in the first half, dropping back from midfield. And he looks really comfortable there. Just to give a shout out to Lewis Brown's cousin, who is actually named Fletcher Brown, and uh, I wonder who he's named after, Tommy. Really? Yeah. That, that that is true. Yeah. So, Fletcher, if you're watching, <laughs> thanks for tuning in, and Steve, if you're watching, Cole, I'm sure Cole you'll be Fletcher. delighted with that. Cole Fletcher. Yeah. <laughs> QPR will look to again try and make something work from this throw in. Brown does well there to shake off his man. Tonks shows great composure there. He's shown great composure all evening, really, in that right-back area. And Harris wins a goal kick. If you're just joining us on Twitter, Facebook or YouTube, firstly, thank you very much for joining us. Myself, Neil and Tommy here at Vitality Stadium. We're just approaching the hour mark, so we'd just like to say another thank you to Hearn and Sons who have taken the time to sponsor us this evening as Noah Bouton goes down and stays down on the far side. It's well won by 
Winterburn and good pressure by Adu Ajayi. And Adu Ajayi there, Tommy showing that you're not just a goal scorer in the modern game. You have to press for the team. You have to fight to win every ball. You can't just be a poacher anymore, really, depending on the style of play in the modern right. game. Especially at this football club when you see the work of, of our current number nine and he looks like he's got that mindset as well. Chance on here for the visitors. Just couldn't quite slip it through. And again, Camis confidently mop up the situation. It's just over an hour played here, Tommy. When will Alan Connell say... You know, we need to sit back. We need to control the game. When when will he start? Maybe, perhaps, being a little bit more defensive in his approach. Yeah, it could be a little bit dangerous. I think at the moment we are a lot of the ball has been in our half. So I'm not sure sitting deep is is the right solution at this stage. We need to try and this is this is the way we need to try well and get one up the by pitch. Winterburn. Adu Ajayi. It's a low one towards the near post. Very well struck. Venom behind the strike. Solomon was there to parry it away yeah that's that's back to how the, the the tactics from now you know you see Ben Winterburn in, in the phase before him and Daniel pressing from the front they've done exactly the same there and got us up the pitch so I think that's the way forward for us in, in this second half to if you sit back in your own half for too long it can be a very dangerous game especially at 1-0 we've just seen on the replay there good save it's probably one that the keeper should make but Hadu Ajayi looking very lively the former Fulham and Brentford striker Marcus Dawes will take this corner again. What does he have up his sleeve this time around? Mm. It's a higher one towards the far post and Bevan will rise. And he'll keep it alive. Bevan, still Bevan. Just wide. He made the most of that second opportunity there, Owen Bevan. He didn't quite strike it cleanly. But another clever set play routine. Just seeing Bevan's chance there just wide. Unfortunately, couldn't make a clean connection. It's QPR make a substitution here. Bring on Ryan Colley. Who will play. Looks like he's going to play as a striker. QPR changing things in the attacking department. Bevan, another monstrous header from him. Winterburn. Very good challenge from him. Oko, who has looked very composed. He's not afraid to start things again. Ferdinand Oko, formerly of Tottenham and West Ham. Winterburn again. Good feet from him. Very good play to find Marcus Dawes. Harris. Bouton. Dawes. Oko. Now Finn Tonks, wide to the Costa Gonzalez. Move a sort of slow down just a little bit here on this right hand side. Winterburn, Oko. Oh, it's a foul man. there on Marcus Dawes. It was a really good piece of play there. And again, like we've mentioned before, Tommy, that left-hand side, the link-up between that trio and the left-hand side looks very promising. Yeah, really good spell. And we, me and Neil were just pointing out here that the longer this game goes on, QPR really leaving free up top. They're, they're not even paying no regard to, to us in possession. So it's going to be very, very important that we switch on to counter-attacks. You can see what they're trying to do when we push a full-back on. They leave two front men high and wide of, of the focal point, you know. So we need to be... Reactions need to be good when we lose the ball, but we need to be super super diligent in our passing and, and make sure the detail's right and, and make sure we're not giving it away too cheaply. Harris takes it short to Dawes. He's got Harris running alongside him. Dawes will go for goal. It was a good effort. Really quick. Was fairly central, but Ben Winterburn stops the counter-attack there. Maybe got a little excited there. And that, that, that is a good yellow card because we was 3v3 at the back and... Um, it was an excellent decision from Ben to stop that and, and break it up. That's, that's, that's taking one for the team. So ben Winterburn goes into the book. Second Cherries yellow card of the evening. We've just seen this shot again from Marcus Dawes, Neil. He really can strike a football, can't he, Dawes? Been very impressive. So it, it's, you know, it's straight down the goalkeeper's throat. I'm just watching the replay again because I'm trying to work out what Ben Winterburn has actually done wrong. You just missed it there. If it was handball, I mean, can you jump in front of the keeper like that? I don't know why not. I don't know, Neil. 
changing the rules all the time, aren't they? If you watch the African Cup of Nations this afternoon, <laughs> referees blowing up on 85 minutes. That was absolutely bizarre. And, of course, we do have representation in that tournament via Jordan Zamora. And sure, Neil and Tommy, you join me in wishing him all the very best for his tournament with Zimbabwe. As the ball goes out for a throw in here. We just mentioned Jordan Zamora there. He hasn't actually played in the Youth Cup for the Cherries, but he's been a real story of the season, hasn't he? Alongside the likes of Jaden Anthony and Gavin Kilkenny in particular, just to highlight three of the names who have really impressed from the academy setup. But just to deviate from that point, as Tonks drives forward, to Costa Gonzalez. Looks for Adu Ajay, just couldn't quite get the pass right. Ben Winterberg maybe does have to be a bit more careful now. He's on a yellow card. But Costa Gonzalez does well. Again, great bit of composure there from Ferdinand Oco. Gonzalez was all alone there and he's done very well to buy a free kick for us there, Tommy. Yeah, no, he's done very well. And back to your point about how well the, the young lads have, have done for us this, this season. And that's why the academy football and, and these competitions are so important to prime them for, for those days, hopefully if and, and, and when they come about. And it's a huge testament to, to all the coaches right through the academy. I've uh, been blown away really since I've come back to the club to, to see the work at, at first hand. The likes of Sean Cooper and Al Connell, led by um, Joe Roach still and, and Bruce Sirachi, and, and going down further, you know, some real good coaching that these lads get. And for, for, for where we are in terms of the academy, pound for pound, we're punching well above our weight. Boys, high towards Bevan again. Winterburn did get a touch. Bevan will keep it alive. He's done very well, Owen Bevan. Harris's cross is claimed by Solomon. And he'll look to go from back to front very, very quickly. But Brown is there to head it away. And Tonks will clear his lines. It's actually a good, a good ball and a great touch by Marcus Dawes. He's done exceptionally well there, but just ran into traffic. QPR will come again with Murphy. Wide to Anthony. Cherries have every man behind the ball apart from the goal scorer, Adu Ajay. But the ball is in the box and it's a good block by Owen Bevan. And he's alert again to show great composure to clear from what looked like a potentially dangerous opportunity there for QPR. Just ask you tactically, Tommy, here. Is this it now when the goalkeeper gets the ball, QPR goalkeeper, he's just going to boot it up to those three? Yeah, I think they look to go from back to front really quick with, with direction. It's not They're not just punting it long. You know, they're really playing for the counter-attack and have to be really... And just to interrupt on. you here, Tommy, sorry, just Tonks has got the ball Great goal. and it's oh. Adewa Jai! Very, very good opportunity to make it 2-0. There's a great ball in by Finn Tonks. And Adewa Jai just couldn't quite apply the finishing touch it's a great opportunity there Tommy for 2-0 yeah definitely and back to Neil's point there as quick as QPR are going forward they're not too quick going backwards so it leaves us with a chance to, to try and extend the lead as well and Adu Ajay, unfortunate there not to add to his tally he's got 11 goals this season he's also attended a number of England under 15 camps Ooh. during his what time it's a lovely passage of play here from the Cherries great composure at the back as Brown drives forward now. Still Brown. Goes for goal. It's just wide. And Tommy has a centre-half when you pass the halfway line. <laughs> what are you thinking? You're thinking, go on. The, nose, highlight, nose the headlines clear. are there for me. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't have got that far, to be honest. <laughs> I'd have been turning back at some point. Ball is wide with Ballot. Drives in field. Acer. Cotter. Wide to Anthony. And again, the Cherries are showing real good defensive shape here. Not panicking. Almost looks like they're allowing QPR to have the ball in certain areas, Tommy. Yeah, it's going to be tough this next 20 minutes because... Um the two wide men for us, Noah Bhutan and, and Michael, have both just come back from slight hamstring injuries as well. They haven't trained as much as they'd like to have done over Christmas. Marcus Dawes is, looks like he's cramping a little bit. 
So I'm sure Al's going to be forced into a couple of changes at some point. So it'll be interesting. I know Owen Palmer's on the bench. He was unlocking not to start today. He had a little bit of an illness just before Christmas as well. So um, he's quite well versed and, and quite experienced. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what Al does in the next 20, 25 minutes. Just a reminder that if this game is a draw, it will go to extra time and penalties. But as things stand, AFC Bournemouth will face either Leicester City or Crew Alexandra here at Vitality Stadium in the fifth round. Not counting our chickens just yet, Neil, though. No, we're not. Just just talking about the bench there. There's a, a Charlie Osborne is one of the options off the bench. Uh, obviously, a young player whose son, Ben Osborne, scored hatfuls of goals in local non-league circles, certainly for Christchurch and Wimborne as well, I think. So, uh, another local lad. Nice to see him maybe come on. I think you mentioned there in the first half, Neil, about Lewis Brown's dad as well. Bournemouth Poppy's manager. It's great to see so much local representation across the front here. Yeah, I mean, going back 20, 25 years, you know, most of the lads in the youth team were were local lads. But as the teams progressed, first team wise, the academies had to progress as well. And, you know, this used to be a one man band with Joe Roach doing everything. And now there's, you know, loads and loads of staff. And one of those staff is alongside us, Tommy Elphick, which just goes to show how far the academy has come. It's made great strides as Marcus Dawes on the left-hand side now. Bouton, who we haven't seen as much of in this second half, Tommy, Noah Bouton. No, I think that's a compliment to QPR, the amount of territory that they had, especially early on in the, in the first half. Um, but they've definitely nullified that left side a little bit. A good spell of possession here for Alan Connell's side. Winterburn. Oko. Here is Dawes. Boot on. In the penalty area. Cuts it back. Winterburn. It was a clever cross from Noah Bouton. And Winterburn just couldn't keep his shot down. A really good cut back. But unfortunately for us, Winterburn skied his effort. Still 1 0. I'm not sure how much we're playing Tommy for his fee today but right at the start of the game he said players start cramping up after 70 minutes 70 minutes and 45 seconds Ferdinand Oko is cramped up <laughs> experience Neil <laughs> um, yeah no it's, again it's just the occasion you know they've had uh, they, Al's tried to treat it as much like a first team game as possible today I know he had him in early he took him for a walk down the beach he builds it up which is the right thing to do to expose him to that sort of build up like it would be in a first team and seeing Ferdy now Marcus went down a little bit earlier Daniel I could just see stretching his calves there as well and you know it's the first time like we said these lads are playing in front of four, five, six hundred people whatever it is tonight and it means a lot to them means so much to them we've um, had, so, we've yeah, had the actual attendance Tom it's 891 yeah, brilliant, which is brilliant. really really uh, special for these youngsters yeah, yeah excellent I'd, on my way in I got here a little bit late and, and I saw them queuing up to get in so again it's, it's another element that these boys are going to have to deal with hopefully going, going further on in their career and just to say I know they can't see us or hear us but 891 we'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight it's it's ultra special for these youngsters but hopefully they've been treated to a good showing as well this evening as after a after a brief break we to get back underway the cherries will make a change at some point but referee Blows and Oko is back on for the Cherries. And Bouton does really well. Gets a rub of the green. He's able to get to the byline. Bouton. Low cut back to Winterburn. Doors! Oh, what a save! It was a special move. Matched by a very special save from Matteo Salomon. Great set by Ben Winterburn. He could have gone on and took the shot himself, but his awareness to set Dorsey as well. It's the first time we've really seen Noah this half. Showing what he's all about to pick someone out, beat his man, pick someone out on, on the edge of the box. But yeah, really unlucky not to not to get a goal from, from that because it was a lovely move. It's a really, really good save from the young goalkeeper there. So Cherries have a corner and this time it'll be Winterburn who will take. Dawes has taken all of the corners so far this evening, but a change of pace with Ben Winterburn on the set piece. It's high towards Bevan again. Wins the header. Harris. 
Look to whip a clever one into Adu Ajayi. And the Cherries will have to drive back in numbers as QPR have left three up, like Tommy said, on a number of times this evening. But Bouton does extremely well to extinguish that threat. And it's Oko who shows great composure there. Acosta Gonzalez is given away. But again, the relentless work rate and desire from this young side to get men behind the ball to regain their defensive structure and shape. As QPR look to find a way back into this game. It's 1-0 to the Cherries here on ASCB TV. It's Oko now just couldn't quite get the pass right to the goal scorer, Dan Aduajayi. Has 11 goals this campaign and is the Cherries' top goal scorer. It's a good pattern of play there from QPR and they look to head towards the Cherries' goal. Again, Marcus Dawes there. Good defensive work from him. And the shot comes in harmlessly over. Yes, definitely. It looks like Balin Johnson coming on. Michael De Michael looks like he's holding his hamstring a little bit here. Ferdy looks like he's running on a little bit of empty, so see where Al gets Balin on. QPR are also making a change as Murphy makes way. He'll be replaced by number 16, Farrell Dancer. Murphy is replaced by Dancer. And the substitution for Ayrton Bournemouth coming off as number 7, Michael de Costa Gonzalez. And Michael de Costa Gonzalez will make way here for AFC Bournemouth. He was the hero of the last round against Exeter City with two brilliantly taken goals. And he will be replaced here at Vitality Stadium. Tommy, what do you make of Michael Tocosta Gonzalez this yeah, evening? Yeah, he's hardly trained, to be fair to him, over Christmas. Um, the lads get a little bit of time in, in the youth team off over Christmas and he actually come back a little bit early to, to try and get himself as fit as possible. So it's a testament to him that he's got to 75 minutes. Uh, he's, he's worked his socks off off the ball tonight. We haven't seen as much of what we saw at Exeter, but there's definitely been glimpses as to see why we all should be quite excited about that lad. Balin Johnson comes on. Tommy just gives a little word on him. Yeah, again he'll come. Up, he'll, he'll work his, his socks off. He he can play down the middle or wide. Um, he's definitely got a bit of pace. So hopefully we can see it now. Oh, there's a chance on here, Tommy, to interrupt you with Noah Bouton. He's got acres of room. Bouton. <laughs> Two 0 to AFC Bournemouth, and the Frenchman had all the time in the world in the penalty area, and he makes it count. A really good finish, and it's AFC Bournemouth 2, QPR 0. Yeah, great to see the pace and power, and we were talking about QPR's tactics early on, and Albert, they can leave themselves at the back, and they certainly did that, and tactics absolutely spot on from, from Al Connell, because he's been talking about that all week and, and exposing them areas, and when we got into this position, you know, on his left foot, really did fancy him, lovely clean strike, and, and left the goalkeeper no chance. Well, we said about five minutes ago that we'd hardly seen him in the second half and there he is making what could be a match-winning impact for Alan Connell's side. Neil, a great finish from a really talented young player. What a, what a fantastic finish it was. I did a question and answer with Noah Bhutan and Marcus Dawes before the game and I asked both of them what they knew about Alan Connell's career as a player. Marcus knew loads. But Noah just said, sorry, I don't know anything. I'm really sorry, Gaffer. Well, hopefully it's going to roll. The boot will be on the other foot one day and we'll be asking Alan Connor what he can tell us about Noah Bouton's career. Just a word on Noah Bouton. He actually rejected West Bromwich Albion, Birmingham City and Stoke City to sign for us, which again shows what great work is going on in the academy setup here, rejecting a lot of Category 2 academies to join us here at AFC Bournemouth. Yeah, I think that's we, we have discussions about what we can offer these lads. You know, We haven't got that status as of yet. I know we're working hard to try and get to that sort of level, but once you get these lads down on trial, that they're not left with clubs and, and you show the, the attention and, and, and the care and the detail and, and the work that they'll get putting into them, you know, it's hard for them to turn that down. It's a really good piece of pressing there from all three of the Cherries front players as Bouton slips in Dawes. This is a chance. Marcus Dawes. Very, very good block there. And the Cherries could have had three there, but for a great piece of defending. Yeah, fantastic block there. Marcus Dawes looking to follow his uh, housemate there, Noah Bouton, onto the score sheet. But I think, you know, Tommy will, will agree that it's important now. 12 minutes to go, a bit of injury time. 
Tommy, the game is not won. No, definitely not. Um, personally, I think it's the most dangerous scoreline possible because it can it can lull you into a, a full sense of security. Um, you see now, even they're still leaving three up, three and a half with the man sort of halfway there. But you know you have to pay respect to that and, and see this game in a professional manner now. Corners whipped in. It's cleared by Anthony Harris. Winterburn. Oh, what a, it's a great ball, ball in. Adwajai missed it and. Bevan just couldn't quite capitalise, but he'll keep the move alive. He's done well there. It's a low cross into the near post area and it's very well cleared, but a really bright impact from the substitute, Neil. But I'm so glad he's come on because I've got a great stat about him. You know, in the 2013 Champions League final, he was a mascot and walked out with Bastian Schweinsteiger. I don't know where you get half of this information from, Neil, but it is outstanding. Outstanding. What was the score, Neil? I don't know. <laughs> don't know that take away from a very, very good statistic, Neil. Well, not even a statistic, just a fact as Winterburn will look to whip this ball in. Drilled in. It's a great area, but Solomon is able to punch it clear and QPR will look to counter very, very quickly here. And it, so in Bevan there with, I don't know if you'd agree, Tommy, maybe a very good foul there as QPR had numbers forward. Yeah, just, just stop the momentum again. And yeah, he's, he's been very, very mature in his performance tonight. He's, he's like you would expect from, from Owen, put his body on the line. And, and the thing I've loved about him tonight, he's been really composed and made some really, really good decisions. And we've just seen another one there. Just to show that we're not biased here, I'm really not sure how... Bevan wasn't booked there for that foul. <laughs> it was a, he clearly stopped the breakaway. I mean, probably not going to complain, but surely a definite yellow card as QPR will look to get down the left-hand side. But Finn Tonks, who has been very diligent on this right, on this right-hand side, sees it out for a throw-in. There's ten minutes left to play here on ASCB TV, and if you're joining us on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, we'd like to thank you very, very much for your support wherever you are around the world. And again, just to say another thank you to our match day sponsors, Hearn and Sons, who have helped us to get this stream online and free for you all to view. So we'd just like to thank Hearn and Sons for their support. A couple of really nice touches from Balin since he's come on. And, and like we said, we build these games up and it's tough for these lads when they're left out at the starting eleven. Um, when you see him come on and, and contribute like he has done in, in the last few minutes, it's, it's really pleasing. QPR will look to come again. Bouton applying the pressure here and again it's that never say die attitude of this football club that you need to succeed at this football club Tommy you know all about that yeah it underpins everything that we're about you know working hard and, and being together and and, and yeah you, you can certainly see the hallmarks of that in, in this team just under nine minutes to play here don't want to curse things it will take a huge effort from QPR to get back into this one but we've seen weirder things happen in football particularly in the FA Youth Cup and again good work from Bouton and Dawes on that left hand side not giving QPR an inch to breathe and again forcing another error it's a hallmark of Alan Connell teams isn't it Neil that never say die attitude relentless from minute one to 90 well yeah I mean um, it's a hallmark of the club you know the development squad the under 18s the, the first team as well you know and it's the, the first team manager will be absolutely delighted to see that the under 18s and the development squad are playing exactly how he wants them to play so when players come into his environment they're ready and they know exactly what they're doing Scott Parker did actually manage an FA Youth Cup game here for Tottenham Hotspur back in 2018 it was back when he was in the Tottenham Hotspur setup. they won on the evening the AFC Bournemouth squad features the likes of Namdi Offerbore, Gavin Kilkenny, Jaden Anthony. And the Tottenham lineup had Oliver Skip and Oliver Skip, yeah. He was a name on that night. He was actually quite impressive on the night as well. Remember Rio Griffiths scored. He's one to look out for the future, playing in France. It's a brief pause in play here as Finn Tonks hobbles off the pitch, but we're just seeing the replay here of Noah Bouton's goal. It's a great angle, this. The composure 
And he's comfortable as a left winger or a left back, Noah Bouton. It's no left backs finish, is it, Tommy? No, uh, to fair play to Alconnor as well. He's sort of transformed in this year into being a, a, a winger as opposed to a fullback. He was very much a left back at the start of the season, but with with the pace and, and the power and, and the quality that he's got in the final third, it's clear to see why I was converted him the way he has. And we've just seen a substitution here. Finn Tonks, unfortunately, won't be able to continue. He's had a very, very impressive night, Finn Tonks, and... Owen Palmer will come on in his place, but Tommy, he's been really impressive, Finn Tonks. He's done very well in his 1v1 yeah, duel in particular. Yeah, I think he has, and, and, and Al was very, um, I wouldn't say worried, but he was he was very um, aware of the threat that, that QPR had out wide, and, and there was a massive onus on the two fullbacks having good games tonight, and, and Finn's been very steady away, been composed with the ball, um, and, and definitely uh, took away the threat of, of QPR out wide today. Just add something else about Noah Bouton there. It's just not what goes on on the pitch and on the training pitch with these players. It's the education side of it off the pitch. That lad came over 18 months ago from France, couldn't speak a word of English. I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago and he's fluent now. So that just shows you how dedicated and committed these lads are and have got to be. I'll add, I'll add to that as well with, with Noah. I was, when I actually come back to the club, I was staying in a hotel for... for a couple of months and at the hotel was a gym that, that the youth team use and I was sitting there one evening and I had my dinner and I was watching the game it was nine half nine in the evening and he was just walking out the gym that's how dedicated he is to to his game and, and improving himself so you can see the work that he's doing he's, he's getting the rewards and if QPR's chances continue like that for the final five minutes of the game I think we'll be quite pleased with that with just under five minutes to go here, Tommy. It's always a dangerous position, isn't it? You might be 2-0 up, but you don't know whether to stick or twist. What would you be telling the players in this situation, in your role? Yeah, I mean, there's there's no need to go chasing the game now. You, stuff like this with Oli with the goal kicks, you know, showing maturity, slowing the game down. They've squeezed up here to, 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 to get us up the pitch, but managing the game with the ball, for me, was always easier than without the ball. So if we can keep the ball for the next five minutes, then we'll keep a clean sheet. That was always my mindset and show a bit of composure. We, we, we should see the game out if we're sensible with it in, in comfortable fashion now, hopefully. Doors, unfortunately, just slipped on the ball there and QPR have got bodies forward. They need to throw them forward to get anything. It's a low drive. Comfortable for Camis. Wales under 17 international just slowing the game down there but again for a goalkeeper it can be such an uneventful evening and then you called upon in an instant and Neil he had to make the save well just looking at the clock 87th minute we're into and we think that's the first save that he's had to make yes they've had a couple of shots which have been on target probably but they didn't find their way through to him because the back four in front of him have been absolutely outstanding as, a, as have the whole team but I think that's the first save he's had to make the Cherries again have been very energetic and diligent in their defensive duties this evening. Stores just couldn't quite beat his man there. The QPR will come again. Ben Winterburn has won it high. And Neil, you just wanted him to keep the ball there because he'd done all the hard work but just couldn't quite keep it. Well, he had it. You know, he, he didn't have any, no danger not being closed down. Just keep the ball there or hoof it in the corner, anything just to... to you know, wind the wind the clock down now because, uh, like I said, one 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 save from the keeper in 87 minutes, and they've now got to try and find three goals from somewhere. There are a lot of tired legs out there for the Cherries as we approach the final two minutes here at Vitality Stadium. Well, it's a really clever pass that, but it's just overcooked a little bit. And again, Camis playing almost like an experienced pro there, just taking his time, slowing things down, telling the team to calm down. You can see Alan Connell on the touchline as well. He's just telling his team just to stay calm. So Cherries will make a substitution when the ball next goes out of play. Just see off screen. Camis goes long. It's intercepted. And Winterburn brings down his man. He has to be careful because he is on a yellow card. And the substitution will happen now. And it is Marcus Dawes who has looked very lively in his central midfield role. Slightly different to the wing position that he's played over the years. And the QPR player is pushing Marcus Dawes off the pitch. Maybe a little bit extra there. 
but Torre Williams comes on for him. And Tommy lovely. just gives a little bit of background yeah, on the lo lovely player, on Torre, Torre Williams. Williams. Obviously, we can see he's, he's he's quite slight at the moment, and and and. Uh, yeah, but he's, he's a really lovely footballer. He'll be a little bit more defensive mindset than Dorsey and hopefully help us to keep the ball now because he's very, very tidy and a clever player. It's a great ball into the box and the offside flag is up. Can I put you, give you a stat about William, Toro Williams? Is it as good as the mascot stat, though? Not quite. So... He qualifies to play internationally for England, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Republic of Ireland and Pakistan. I can assure you that Neil wasn't reading those lists of countries. He remembered those all off the top of his head. The model pro. As Balin Williams looks to get in behind here. And we're into the final minute here at Vitality Stadium. 2-0 to AFC Bournemouth. And Tommy, I don't want to jinx things, but if you could give us a man of the match, your choice for a man oh. of the match, I'm going to put you on the spot right now with a minute to go. Who's your choice and why? That lad's not far away. <laughs> um, neither is that one. Uh, no, for me, the, the Ben Winterburn's been an absolute standout. Again, his, his energy and, and his quality and his work rate has, has drove this team forward. Ferdi Oko for, for 60, 70 minutes was absolutely superb. We haven't seen him as much in possession in, in the second half, but for the first half was really clever. Archie, another one, worked his socks off. Owen Bevan's been massive at the back. Lewis Brown playing out of position. So there's, there's, there's plenty of candidates. Daniel getting his goal. Noah with his goal as well, taking us forward. But I think Ben Winterburn, again, has been a standout for me. Nolly Camis claims the ball just as the fourth official puts the board up. Four minutes of added time. And surely, I don't want to jinx things, but surely the Cherries will be progressing to face either Leicester City or Crew Alexandra here in the fifth round in a couple of weeks' time, Neil. Well, yeah, fingers crossed. But, you know, like we say, you know, a lot can happen in four minutes. We've seen that in a couple of first-team games already this season. Some late goals for and against. But, yeah, Leicester against Crew is going to be played on Friday night. Leicester play the FA Youth Cup games at their, their training ground. So, uh, fingers crossed. And if you could just hear on the tannoy there, Ferdinand Oko has been given the Sponsors Man of the Match Award by Strategic Solutions, so different to what Tommy Elphick thinks here on the stream. As QPR look to try and salvage a really late goal here that could change the tide of this tie but the ball reaches Camis and again he'll use his intelligence to play down the clock I would imagine Matt seriously if you asked 891 people in this crowd you would get 11 nominations for man of the match it just goes to show the standard of play that we've seen here this evening across the entire team and like you say it's very difficult to pick out one standout performer from tonight's game and again, look at the relentless energy here. And Ben Winterburn can drive forward here. He looked to thread it through to Noah Bouton with a back heel, but couldn't quite get it right. But again, he's driven this team, like you've said, Tommy. We're in the 90th minute here, and he's still looking to win the ball high up, high up the pitch. Yeah, just like he could, he could be a serious player for this club going forward, you know. And The chance on here for the visitors. Very well scouted by Owen Palmer, the substitute. It's a low one. Very comfortable for Camis again. And the 891 people in the crowd will have been very, very pleased with what they've seen tonight, Tommy, across the pitch, like we've just said. Yeah, I think that the most pleasing thing, I think, you come, you, you, you see a team that's really, really working hard. Um, you, you, you see a style, you see a, a game plan, um, everyone buying into it, no egos. It's, it's just it's nice to come and watch. And, and if you've watched tonight, why wouldn't you come back and watch the next round? That That's that's the way I, I, I see tonight's performance. You know, it's, it's been brilliant from 1 to 11. And, and the lads that have even come on as well, they've all added to, to the performance. So big, big compliments to the whole group. The chance on here for the substitute, Johnson. I just couldn't quite wrangle his feet together. And the crowd wanted a penalty for that. And Archie Harris has done very, very well there to win the ball. 
He doesn't need to get involved in that. 2-0 up with seconds left on the clock. A few unsavoury scenes here. Cherries are winning 2-0. Don't need to get involved in that. As Archie Harris did very well to win that free kick. He's been a bundle of energy tonight. Harris, he's overlapped Bouton several times. He's been diligent in his defensive work. The, the, the whole performance, like we, we've said for the last five minutes, has been absolutely superb. And I think the biggest point of the night is what Neil said before. There's only four second-year scholars in this group and it makes a huge difference. I know from experience when I was coming through, through the youth teams, when you have more second years than you do first years and it tilts that balance, it's, it's a massive advantage. And whatever they're doing this year, they're only hopefully going to be better next year. And there's the full-time whistle. It's been an excellent night for Alan Connell and his young team. They've won 2 0, and it was a performance, as we've said over the past five minutes, that really, really caught the eye. They took the lead within two minutes, thanks to Daniel Aduajay's really, really good Predators finish at the near post. It's his 11th goal of the season before Noah Bouton finished a brilliant team move really well with his left foot in the second half to make it 2 0. A very, very impressive performance from Alan Connell's men. Tommy, a good night all round. Yeah, absolutely superb and leads to a lovely tie against either Crewe or Leicester. And like, I, as I said before, I saw Al's preparations for the games and, and QPR have big threats, you know, and, and, and coming down from London have some great players and, and, and you can see what they're trying to do and what they're about. But I think we nullified them in, in every sense of, of their strengths and and really imposed ourselves and, and made the game about us this evening and just a great performance all round. And just a word, Neil, from you on Alan Connell. You've known him for a long, long time from when he was a player back here all the way to his coaching journey. He's really excelled in this under-18s role, hasn't he? It's been, an, it's been an absolutely fantastic... The job he's done here has been fantastic. The club have given him the resources as, as they have uh, with, with the club coming through through the Premier League. They have to get put resources into the academy as well. Adam's used uh, Alan has used them so wisely. This team is an absolute joy to watch. I've luckily to have watched the last round, and they were brilliant in that game as well. But it's like Tommy says: when you see the work that he does behind the scenes, and people don't see that. It, 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 I'm not saying it's 24/7, but it's just the detail, and uh, every player knows exactly what they're doing on the pitch. You know, and they're, and they're doing a beach walk at 12 o'clock, and when we went to Exeter for the third round, you know, it's on a coach and it's pre-match and it's everything is done like a first-team game would be done. So these lads know if and when they get there, they know exactly what to expect, and I just can't give him enough praise. We're just seeing Noah Bouton's finish on the stream here but a really nice moment for these young players with their supporters family friends the 891 people in attendance this evening will be leaving Vitality Stadium satisfied and hungry for more FA Youth Cup action as soon as we get details of the Leicester City or Crew Alexandra game we'll let you know this is a fantastic scene here at Vitality Stadium and we're just seeing Ben Winterburn a fantastic display from him in particular Tommy this evening yeah, brilliant. Um, so just getting drowned out by the music there. and <laughs> No, he, he was absolutely fantastic. He burst on the scene with us. As I said, he only trained a couple of days before our Premier League Cup tie against uh, West Brom. And yeah, really burst onto the scene that evening. And he's backed his performance up tonight, along with others. Like, asked me for a man in the match there, but there could be five or six. There really could, even more. And uh, Ben, Ferdy, uh, Owen, but they, they've all played absolutely superb and like, like Neil said, an absolute credit to Al Connell and, and the club. And full time here at AFC Bournemouth, whether you've joined us on Facebook, Twitter or YouTube, we really appreciate your support around the world and a big thank you to our match sponsors, Hearn and Sons, who have helped us to bring this stream for you for free. Neil, Tommy, thank you very much for joining me in the commentary booth here this evening. A great night for AFC Bournemouth. A great night for Alan Connell and a great night for the Academy. Thank you for joining us.